Hi, I'm Rudy Tanzi. I'm a professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School and director of the Genetics and Aging Research Unit at Mass General Hospital. Our lab is involved with identifying and characterizing Alzheimer's genes. And back in 2008, we carried out a very large genome-wide association screen of over a thousand families with late onset Alzheimer's disease. At that time, we found several new genes that confer a risk for Alzheimer's, and one of the most interesting was CD33. Now, CD33 can contain either a risk variant, which is what we described in 08, and later, two other groups in 2011 found a protective variant of the same gene for Alzheimer's disease. Since that time, we've been interested in learning how CD33 contributes to the pathology of Alzheimer's disease and to risk, either by protecting against the disease or increasing susceptibility. In the next segment, you will hear about our results from patient studies, animal studies, and cell line studies of how CD33 plays a role in Alzheimer's disease. My name is Anna Grichuk, and I work as a postdoctoral fellow in the laboratory of Professor Rudy Tanzi at Mass General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Before our study, nothing was known about the function of CD33 in the brain. To explore the role of CD33 in Alzheimer's disease, we performed extensive analysis using postmortem human brain material. We found, remarkably, that CD33 exhibits a prominent microglial expression. Moreover, we detected a marked increase in the number of CD33 monoreactive microglia in the brains of Alzheimer's disease cases, shown here on the right, relative to age-matched controls, shown on the left. We also found, remarkably, that carriers of one CD33 minor T allele, which confers protection against Alzheimer's disease, shown in the middle panel, have reduced numbers of CD33 positive microglia relative to carriers of the major G allele, shown on the left panel. This was very pronounced in subjects carrying two protective alleles, the TT genotype on the right, who displayed very few CD33 positive microglia. To begin addressing the role of CD33 in microglial cells, we derived primary microglial cultures from both wild-type and CD33 knockout mice. We found that CD33 knockout microglia, unlike wild-type microglia, displayed a dramatic increase in amyloid beta uptake visualized in the red channel. Complementary experiments in BV2 microglial cells further indicate that the sialic acid binding domain of CD33, located at the N-terminal region of CD33, is required for its inhibitory effect on amyloid beta uptake. A mutant CD33 protein lacking the sialic acid binding domain, shown on the left, is no longer capable to inhibit amyloid beta uptake by microglial cells. Finally, to address the involvement of CD33 in Alzheimer's disease pathogenesis in a more relevant context, we employed the APPPS1 transgenic mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. Mice carrying the APP and PS1 transgenes in a CD33 knockout background, shown on the right, had a markedly decreased amyloid beta burden relative to APPPS1 control mice, shown on the left. This effect was seen in both the cortex and hippocampus. Collectively, our results suggest that CD33-mediated signaling in microglial cells strongly impairs their ability to clear brain amyloid. Our results define a novel pathway that controls amyloid beta clearance in the aging human brain that is highly relevant to Alzheimer's disease pathogenesis. So you've heard about how CD33 seems to be a key regulator for whether microglial cells can clear amyloid out of the brain. And specifically, if you can inactivate CD33, our data suggests that you can get microglial cells to clear more A-beta, more amyloid deposition from the brain. So going forward, we'll be very interested in learning how to therapeutically uh, modulate CD33 so as to uh, entice microglial cells to clear more amyloid as a way to prevent 
and maybe even treat Alzheimer's disease. We can think about small molecules that can antagonize CD33 as a receptor. We can think about antibodies for this purpose. So this would be the future direction of our lab now, is not only to go on and understand more about the mechanism by which CD33 regulates microglial clearance of beta amyloid, but maybe more importantly, to think about therapeutically how we can manipulate CD33 to uh, clear more amyloid from the brain using microglial cells as the agent. Thanks very much.